Hey guys, Micah here with ebikeschool.com and today I'm going to be comparing these four electric two-wheelers. I have here the 2019 Zero FXS electric supermoto, the 2019 CSC City Slicker urban electric motorcycle, the Gen Z 2.0 F electric scooter, and the Bloom Scooter electric scooter. Now I've chosen these four vehicles because A, I happen to have them here, and B, I think that these are probably the four best options for two-wheeled electric vehicles, at least here in the US. And again, I'm talking about sort of motor vehicle level, not uh, you know electric bicycles or electric uh, skateboards, electric kick scooters. Those are great, I love those, but for anyone who's looking for something that's a step up, something that's a true motor vehicle that you can really ride on the road, I think these are probably the four best options right now in the US. Now I have done uh, complete reviews of three of these, the City Slicker, the Gen Z 2.0F, and the Bloom Scooter on Electrek. So make sure you go check that out. You can just Google each of these and the word Electrek and I'm sure you'll find them. I have not yet done a full review of the Zero FXS. I've been riding it around for about three weeks now and it's going great, I love it, but I just haven't had enough time on it yet to do the complete review there on Electrek. So that will be coming in the next month or so. All right, now I'm gonna compare these bikes on uh, six different categories. I'm gonna compare them on price, power, speed, convenience, comfort, and build quality. And I'm not gonna give them points or give them like uh, definite rankings because a lot of these are really sort of a personal preference or a personal choice when you go to choose one of these, but I am gonna compare them one against the other so you can see how they stack up. All right, now let's start with price. Over here on the end, we have the most expensive. We'll start with the Zero FXS. This is $10,500, though some states have rebate programs uh, where you can get a tax incentive or something for buying an electric motorcycle. Uh, next, we've got the City Slicker, which is $2,500, but with other fees, by the time it gets to your house, it's gonna be about $2,800 or $2,900. The Gen Z 2.0F in this configuration is, I believe, $4,300 or $4,200, but there is another version that lacks the trunk on the back and the center stand, and that one's $3,700. And then at the end here, we've got the Bloom Scooter, which is the most affordable of the bunch, at about $2,000. I think there was a sale where it was 100 bucks off or something, but definitely the most affordable. Now let's look at power. Uh, when we go through the power, we're gonna go sort of the opposite direction. The lowest power is going to be the Bloom Scooter. They don't say exactly what the power is. There are a bunch of specs on the website that I'm not sure are entirely accurate. I'm guessing this is around the one and a half kilowatt uh, power range. It's got good power off the line, but then it starts to taper off as the speed increases. The Gen Z 2.0F, Again, they don't say exactly what the power is. I'm guessing this is just above 1.5 kilowatts. It feels a little bit more powerful than the Bloom Scooter, but these are more of your, um, sort of your minivan of the scooter world type of vehicles. These are not meant to be going super fast or not meant to be super powerful. So the acceleration is good, but it's not, um, you know, sporty. Both of these I definitely keep in their highest power mode because I think for going around the city, that's probably the safest mode to be in, just so you have all the power that you could possibly use. For the City Slicker, it is listed as a three kilowatt motor. However, I've actually tested it and measured it at just above four kilowatts, which means it's putting out about five horsepower. This is the uh, 2019 with the upgraded 2019 controller, which means that it is more powerful and it's really a lot of fun. Right off the line, it's just got a ton of pull. It really launches when you twist the throttle to the point where you've gotta be kinda of careful with it because while some people will say, oh, this is a scooter, it pulls a lot more than a scooter and you can actually get into trouble on this one. So it's powerful enough that you do need to be careful with it. Not that you don't need to be careful with the other ones, but this one, you could really get into some trouble if you're being stupid. <laughs> All right, lastly, the Zero FXS. This is 35 kilowatts. This is in a totally different category, all right? I think you can probably see that by looking at them, and again, the price puts it in a different category, but we're talking, you know, one and a half, one and a half, three to four kilowatts, 35 kilowatts. So this is an entirely different beast. This one, I ride it in eco mode, because in eco mode, it is more powerful than I need. If you put it in power mode, which I do sometimes just for the fun, you just lift the front wheel right off the ground. So this one has tons and tons of power. I was actually talking to um, Gabe Askenazi, the CTO of Zero, and he was saying that a lot of the Zero execs, their personal ride is actually the FXS. This is the, uh, or maybe the FX, basically the, the FX model. The FX is the uh, off-road sort of dual sport one. 
but uh, this is the entry level model to the Zero lineup. It's you know the slowest, the least powerful, but it is still crazy powerful and it's a lot of fun because in addition to that power, it's really lightweight. So you can just flick this thing around and have a lot of fun on it. All right, so that's power. Let's look at speed now. Speed, it's gonna go sort of the other way here. At the fastest, we've got the uh, Zero FXS, which gets up to 85 miles an hour. That's highway capable, folks. If you need a urban electric vehicle that you can also take on the highway occasionally, this is gonna be the only one that can do it. If you come over here, the City Slicker, it can get up to about 45 miles an hour. I've gotten it like 49 or so with a very slight downhill, but this is not a highway vehicle. This is for riding around the city and getting up on maybe some of these like local highways that aren't super big and people aren't traveling more than about 45, maybe 50 miles an hour where you'd be stuck in the right lane. But again, this is not a highway vehicle. This is very much a urban vehicle. It's in the name, City Slicker. Gen Z 2.0 F. 30 miles an hour, that's a hard limit on it. Uh, it's programmed into it. It could probably go faster because you can feel the motor cut out when you hit 30, but uh, that's what it's limited to now because so many states have 30 mile per hour limits for their moped laws, which I'm here in Massachusetts and we definitely do. So this one's limited to 30, but that does add some convenience because you can register it as a moped and we'll get to that in a moment. Lastly, the Bloom Scooter. This one gets up to about 25 miles per hour. However, the uh, speedometer says you're going closer to 40 miles an hour, uh, though it is in kilometers per hour, so it says you're going like 66. So don't believe the speedometer on this one. It's not accurate, it reads too high. It actually goes about 25. The company says that uh, they also have models that can go faster. I've yet to see them. Maybe they do, maybe they don't, I don't know. Uh, there was some shady things going on with the company, so I'm not exactly sure what to uh, expect there, but all I know is that the one that I have goes 25. All right, now let's go to convenience. When it comes to convenience, we'll look at sort of the storage and how great it is for going around the city doing city things, and also how convenient it is to own. In terms of storage, you cannot beat the Gen Z 2.0F. It's got this big locking uh, cargo box in the rear. I love taking this one grocery shopping. For all of the others, they don't have as good storage, so I have to bring a backpack. For this one, I almost never need to use a backpack. I can put everything in the cargo box. The Bloom Scooter has a small amount of storage under the seat, but basically I just keep the charger there. Uh, same thing with the City Slicker. This one actually has a little bit more storage here in the fake tank uh, as compared to the Bloom Scooter, but I keep the charger here and there's enough room left in there to keep you know, gloves, wallet, keys, um, maybe like six bananas, but that's about it. The Zero FXS, there's no storage. Don't think about <laughs> putting anything in here. You don't even have, you don't even have a glove box. Um, you, what you can do is you can add panniers, you know, you can add bags, you can add hard cases, but uh, straight out of the factory, you're not getting any storage on this one. This one's for having fun on. It's not really meant for, you know, going grocery shopping. I use it for that, but I take like a hiking backpack or something to take this one shopping. In terms of convenience and in, uh, in ownership, uh, one of the things that I like to look at is how well do they charge. For this one, the batteries are not removable. So with the Zero, you have to park it somewhere where you can plug into a 110 outlet. Uh, the uh, cord is actually stored here in the swing arm, which is really nice because you always have it. I was worried at first that it was gonna fall out, but it stuffs in there really tight and you've always got the cord there. The uh, City Slicker, you can remove the battery, so you can either charge it on the bike, just like the Zero FXS, or you can carry the battery inside. Um, it's a little bit annoying to take the battery out. There's a bunch of steps. You gotta open the battery door. You have to unplug multiple wires. You have to put the key in, wiggle it while you unlock the battery retaining strap. Then you've gotta remove that and then pull the battery out. So the whole thing takes about a minute. It's not terrible, but it's not the most convenient. The Gen Z 2.0F, uh, you can also charge the battery on it or remove the battery. Uh, removing the battery is so much easier. It's just one little button. You push the button, you pull the battery out, you're done. Uh, the other thing is that it has a built-in charger in the battery. So all you need is that uh, cord and then you can plug it into any outlet. Uh, same thing with the Zero, like I mentioned, all you need is the cord, it's got a built-in charger. For the Bloom Scooter, in terms of charging, this one is, um, I would say the least convenient. It's basically like the Zero, you can't remove the batteries at all. You have to have the charger. This one does not have a built-in charger. So the charger I keep under the seat. And basically that means you have to park somewhere where you can plug in. Uh, in my parking garage, I run a 75-foot extension cord from the only outlet to get there. So far, management hasn't said anything, so either they haven't seen it or they just don't care. But depending on your situation, you might not have a place where you can plug in, so it's something to think about.
the last part of convenience is going to be registering. So all of these probably need to be registered depending where you live. Uh, the Bloom Scooter and the Gen Z 2.0, where I live here in Massachusetts, can be registered as mopeds because they go uh, not more than 30 miles an hour. And what that means, and by the way, they don't need pedals here in Massachusetts. People get all up in a bunch about, oh, a moped has to have pedals. Depends where you are. The word is changing. Relax, people. Um, so here in Massachusetts, I don't need insurance for these. I don't need a motorcycle license for these. I don't even need a license plate. They just get a sticker on the back that says they're a moped. It's $40 for two years. It's really a great system. For the other two, for the City Slicker and the Zero FXS, these are both motorcycles in the eyes of the law. Both of these, at least here in Massachusetts, I need a motorcycle license for, so I had to get a motorcycle license, which meant that I had to learn how to ride a gas scooter I'm sorry, I had to learn how to ride a gas motorcycle just to be able to ride electric motorcycles, but it's neither here nor there. So both of these you're going to need a motorcycle license for if you want to ride these. Totally worth it if you want to go that route, but it's something to keep in mind. If you just want to ride with a driver's license, many states you can get away with something like these two. All right, time for comfort. Um, for me, all of these are great to ride, so it's hard for me to compare comfort. What I can compare is my wife's uh, idea of what's more comfort from sitting on the pillion seat, from sitting in the back. What my wife says is that the most comfortable of all of these is actually the cheapest one, and that is the Bloom Scooter over here. I don't know why, but for some reason this one is the one that she loves the most. Uh, I think maybe because it's got this little seat thing here in the back, like a backrest, so she doesn't feel like she's going to fall off. But apparently, from the passenger's perspective, this is the one. Um, the Gen Z, you can take two people on it. You're not really supposed to. I'm not going to say I recommend it, but I will say I do it a lot. Um, and it's not so bad, you know, I end up sitting very much on the front of the seat, my wife's on the main part of the back. It works. Not really the vehicle you want if you're going to take two people. Both of the motorcycles, my wife is not a huge fan of sitting on the back of. I guess, you know, smaller, harder seats. Neither of these are very plush seats. Um, the Zero's got a nicer seat than the City Slicker. I mean, you're paying, you know, another $8,000, so I would hope it would. But um, neither of these, for my wife anyways, uh, are the most comfortable from the pillion seat. For me, like I said, riding them, I'm pretty adaptable. They all feel perfectly comfortable to me. The suspension on the Bloom scooter down here on the end is not the best. It is the cheapest of all these, so it's going to have the cheapest suspension. So when I hit bumps, uh, this one definitely has less comfort than all of these others which have better suspension. But at a, at a certain point, you know, if you're a pretty adaptable kind of guy and you can basically sit on anything, then you'll enjoy all of these. Lastly, let's talk about build quality. Now, as you might have guessed, the build quality is basically going to follow the price. The Bloom Scooter here is the cheapest at about $2,000, and the quality is just not there compared to the others. That doesn't mean it's bad, you know, the scooter works great, I've been riding it around, it's enjoyable, I like the scooter, but I will say the suspension is not as good quality, the uh, brakes are not as good quality, though they are good enough for what it is. Um, the whole thing is just, uh, it, it's not there. The charger is fine, but it's not the best quality. These others have higher quality chargers. It's, it's a fine scooter is what I would say. Now as we move up the line, we get to the uh, City Slicker, which is sort of the next step up in quality. Again, this is a, I would call it a good quality, but not a great quality. It's a step up from the Bloom Scooter, but, um, you know, the brakes aren't anything compared to the Zero. The suspension, you can't compare it to the Zero. These are all going to be of lower level. But again, this is a slower vehicle. You know, it's only going about 45, 46 miles an hour. So it doesn't need to have the same quality of components as something that's going on the highway. I've had this one for about six months, and so far it's been working great. Uh, I don't really have any complaints about anything specific. It's just, you know, the build quality isn't quite there compared to something that's going to be more expensive. Even things, like I mentioned, removing the battery, it's just... It's a little more fumbling around. If you step up again to the next level, we get to the Gen Z. This is the $4,300 one. And here, you definitely see a difference in quality. Uh, the suspension is smoother. The way you move the battery is nicer. You know, you, you have to pay for that design. If you want engineers to spend time developing the uh, battery removal system to be something convenient, that's going to cost more money. If you want, you know, something that's going to take a little longer and be a little more fumbling, you can have a less expensive type of vehicle. So you do, uh, when you pay more, you get something that's going to be a little better, a little higher quality, uh, a little more thought out. Uh, and then there are just, you know, sort of extra features. You've got GPS tracking in the Gen Z 2.0. Uh, 
Um, you've got uh, connectivity with your phone so you can check the charge level while you're you know, up in your apartment instead of uh, having to go down to the garage and checking to see if your battery is charged. Things like that that you just aren't going to have in a uh, less expensive vehicle like the Bloom Scooter or the City Slicker. So definitely a step up in quality. Ironically, a step down in speed and power, but these are two different vehicles for two different types of riders. Lastly, the Zero FXS. It's amazing. Like, I just, I can't say anything bad about it. I love it. I want to buy it from the company. This one's on loan for uh, a month or two. I want to buy it from them so I don't have to give it back. I, I guess that's just the most resounding positive review you could give it. It's just an awesome motorcycle. Everything's top-notch quality and I love it. I can't say anything bad about it. <laughs> Except, you know, it is a lot more expensive than all of these. Ten and a half thousand dollars versus two and a half, two thousand, four thousand. It's a big difference. And because I'm a complete idiot, I forgot to mention range here, which you would think would be pretty important on electric vehicles. So I'm just going to dub it over here and we'll pretend like I did it at the time. So the FXS has about 100 miles of city range and about 40 miles of highway range. The highway range isn't great, but this is really meant as more of an urban type uh, supermoto and then you have the ability to go on the highway. The City Slicker gets about 30 to 40 miles of range. That really depends if you're spending more time up near its higher speed of about 45 miles an hour. But if you're really just in the city, you're going to wind up getting more than about 40 miles. On the Gen Z here, I generally get just about 30 miles, sometimes a bit less, especially if I'm carrying a passenger, but it's around 30 miles. And then here on the Bloom Scooter, uh, again, the, the range is around 30 miles or so. The company says 40 to 50 miles. You're never going to get that much. Uh, and these are SLA batteries, so you know you take it for what it's worth, but I'd say about 30 miles on the Bloom scooter. All right, so there you have it. That's how I stack up these four different bikes. The Zero is the most expensive, though it is really the only highway-capable vehicle here, and it is a ton of fun. It's got more power than you need. It's just an awesome vehicle. The City Slicker, if you want an electric motorcycle, but you don't want to spend a bunch of money and you only need it for the city or maybe some like slightly larger suburban roads up to about 45 miles an hour, this one will do it. If you want a really high quality electric scooter that has tons of extra features, the Gen Z 2.0 is for you. And again, there's the, the F and the S version. So this one's a little more expensive, but they do have a slightly uh, less expensive version. And then lastly, if you want an electric scooter uh, that's gonna work for you and is gonna get you around, but doesn't necessarily have the convenience of some of the more expensive options, this is a great option. Um, it's just, it's not of the same quality level as the rest of them, but I'm perfectly happy riding this one around. It is a good scooter. So I hope you guys found that uh, sort of coverage of all four of these helpful. Uh, if you did, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. Last but not least, before you guys head out, I am going to announce the winner of last week's book giveaway. And the randomly selected commenter is... Tomas Fernandez. So congratulations, just let me know uh, which one of my books you'd like, either the DIY Lithium Batteries, DIY Solar Power, the Ultimate Do-It-Yourself E-Bike Guide, or my newest book, Electric Motorcycles 2019. Let me know where to send it, and anybody else who wants a chance to win one of my books for free, all you have to do is put a comment below, and hopefully you'll be the randomly selected commenter at the end of my next video. And if you don't want to wait until then, you can always find my books on Amazon. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you next time.